ধরনে লেখা লেখিগুলোর জন্য সেই ফিরে যেতে হয় ক্লাসিক্স গুলোর দিকে তো ওভারঅল আমার মনে হয় যে এটাই এটাই একটুখানি do we have any questions uh, at this point of time uh, we'll take a few questions and then maybe yes can we have a mic there please dia has a question everyone uh, well my question is how many times should we be actually rejected by the publishers to know that uh, no that uh, that capacity to write is actually not within us and uh, my second question is there is recently the thing that uh, will my just shout out we can hear you hi in the public buy what i'm writing so do we write for ourselves do we write what we want to read or do we write for the public and thirdly how dangerous is it to be a full time writer i think diya could actually answer these questions and then ask her own question diya would you like to tell them how many times you reject them before you take their manuscript <laughs> come on hello Are you asking how many times you need to be rejected before you're accepted? Before we know that we cannot do that. I don't think you should ever think you can't be a writer. I think that uh, uh, you need to find the right home, the right publishing house for your work. And one rejection doesn't necessarily mean that your entire body of work is rubbish. I hope that answers your question. <laughs> right. Your question now, uh, dear. To you answer yes? one bit of your question where you said you write for the public. um the thing is you write what you write and you know if, if somebody likes your story it gets published i didn't uh, um get rejected even once to be honest with you but i didn't know that what i was writing was to be labeled as writing for young adults i was just writing an adventure uh and i thought you know alexander dumas never did uh, get categorized uh, as a young adult writer everybody reads him and he wrote these real swashbucklers that i liked and well i i thought i'd write something like that and and the mythology was sort of part of the spine but i never thought people would say oh she's a mythology you know she writes about mythology or she writes about fantasy or she writes about young adults that that was not I never thought of that. I just wrote a story that worked as a story. I think that's the best way to write it because who's your public anyway? I mean, you've got like about 150 people here and and they're all different distinct people with distinct unique unique tastes. I mean, the closest you can do probably is if not write for yourself, then write for any one person whom you're perhaps telling the story to. And you know best. what uh, there's this it, I have a I have an answer for you, Dia. If you don't want to spoil your whole life then try it thrice indian publisher ke dao and still if you are rejected you know just move on you can write something other you know apart from oi oi lekha ta ke niye push karar theke just let's be really practical if tin bar tumi rejected hoyecho to forget about that writing you know people jara okhane boshe ache they are enough you know you book is out you know is it going to be read and there's so much pressure unless you're a best seller writer blah 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 and this is what you need to do this that's what you need to do so what i you know this is one story which really uh, comforts me so i just want to tell you it's from a book called the gainsay literary and potato peel pie society and it has these sorry can we have that one yeah again? the gainsay literary and potato peel pie society okay is by mary ann shafter uh, so you just look at it it's a beautiful book so the line over there is that every book comes with a homing device on it which is going to find its ideal reader and its ideal readers you know so your book is going to get to the reader sounds very yash chopra 
Yes. Somebody has been made okay. for you somewhere, kind of yeah, thing. Kind of. Your your ideal reader is there. But but I kind of like that, you know. It comforts me. I, I it makes me all zen about this whole marketing and yeah. that that part of publishing. Right. Right. Dhanvi, did you want to add to that? Yeah, I have a um, since this panel is on what women want. Can we have a microphone there, please? <laughs> yes, this woman wants a mic now. <laughs> Hello? Hi. Uh, this panel is on what young women want. And I, I was curious, all of you write very different kinds of, uh, you know, books. Your, your writing uh, is, you know, covers a range of genres and you publish with various publishers. I was curious to know what to you is an ideal publisher? What do you look for when you uh, pitch a book? Thanks. Oh my God. You want the publisher to adopt you and put you up and um, make you write on a deadline and yet not put pressure. So it's, it's actually, okay, I'm just joking. But I think it's, it's, it's hard for the publishers as well because I think the problem is in, in the way that, you know, uh, marketing budgets are set. I, in my experience, I would think that editorially, I've always been very well taken care of, you know, the book is really, it has benefited so much from editorial invention, it's interventions, it's been looked after. But after that, I think what happens is, you know, the marketing budget is linked to the number of copies printed, which I think is ridiculous, because when you already have a book, a hundred thousand, you, you know that the author's hundred thousand copies are going to sell, then you have a huge uh, publicity budget for that. But for, for the smaller books, for new writers, you have very little budget. So I think that is, you know, um, what the problem is. That, um, you know, when you're writing your first book, you need a little bit of shepherding and you need um, that. So I think the ideal publisher would, you know, would spend more effort on the, on the younger authors, the authors that they've just started to shepherd along. So, because I think it's an investment in the long term, you know. Um, so if you, yeah. And you've also got them cheap. So you, you'll be making more money also, I think. I mean, I, I'm, she's the I am person. So she should, you know. <laughs> Don't point. Yeah, because. <laughs> no, I'm, 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 I'm trying I, I, to actually I do make think a case by uh, using big words. Yeah, I, I think um, a lot of people think marketing is, uh, branding and uh, sure visibility is very important but uh, to garner visibility actually what is really needed is distribution I mean I think the challenge that she's trying to point out is not so much that our books are not talked about they are talked about very effectively and extremely well at least by my publishers I think they've, they've really done a fantastic job but um, distribution is a challenge and I think it's a challenge pretty much for books right now everywhere but there is you know there's this very old-fashioned FMCG line that people use to do dikhta hai wo bikhta hai. so if your book is not seen and my book is not seen in Calcutta at all it's very disappointing um, especially given the fact that it's doing so well in the West and so well in the South and reasonably well in the North and this is my hometown now um, it doesn't sell here at all I barely see it in stores. I've even stopped pushing it. I just tell people, you know, do just get it from Flipkart. And that is a disappointment because somewhere, either I mean, one one would expect um, because a publisher, when a publisher signs you on, commits to your book being distributed. And if distribution doesn't happen, I think that is an expectation that um, that uh, is not met for whatever reason, for even the best of reasons, really. Um, so it's not so much marketing or, you know, uh, doing a grand event. It's really much more ground specific. Am I there in a bookstore in Durgapur or Asansol? If I'm not there, there's something missing. I think I agree completely. Um, editorially, I've been very well taken care of. And uh, uh, you get a lot of support. You get uh, excellent um, 
sort of intervention there as you said but the main thing is the distribution the main thing is seeing the book in the bookstore the main thing is your friends going and um, going to a crossword and finding that you know, copies are there for them to buy because one thing I've learned the hard way when the first book came out and uh, everyone wanted to buy it and my husband was with the bank then I think some 2,000 people collection. short story um, I think uh, both books actually that's what happens people go in there what you know, family people go in there, not find the book, and nobody goes back to a crossborough or landmark or Oxford. I mean, Flipkart is still, you still probably click again, but you know, make the effort, park your car, go to Oxford, not find the book there. They don't tell you, but they don't go back again to buy it, right? So it's, it's finding the book in the bookstore. That's what I think we would want as authors from the publisher. Yes. Finally, I think we would all like to know about uh, the stories that they will be telling us in the future the stories that they want to tell us, so please tell us about your forthcoming works. I don't have any plan right now and I can't share it also. But any specific line of uh, thought that you're pursuing at the moment? Okay. Not really. So we'll have to wait and see. Devo Priya. Okay, so I'm, I'm working on a book called The Heat and Dust Project, which as I told you is co-written with my husband, which is the worst idea ever. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's the story of a journey that we took across India on a very, very tight budget, 500 rupees a day. So we traveled over 16,000 kilometers in local buses. And um, so, so the journey has been done. And um, so now we're sort of putting the book together. Hopefully it'll be out this year. And, sort of, yeah. and it's on oh. Facebook, isn't it? It's uh, largely documented on Facebook. So Yes, so we've got a, a group on Facebook. We, we wanted to use social media because, you know, it's so empowering. And, you know, yes. uh, yeah, very distracting. That's but very also innovative as well. It's so what we did, you know, when we were traveling, we sort of documented the journey on Facebook. We started a group. So then people started joining the group and giving suggestions that oh so you're there this is what you should do and so some people kept us in their houses so we saved money the 500 right. rupee a day so you know so if you save then you, you could use it yeah. the next day right. so so hopefully it'll get done this year great absolutely you're next uh, I am working on a book trying to finish which is the hardest thing to do right to finish the book but um, yeah, it's about, uh, I think everything, it's about everything. So when we write about, um, I tend to say I write about messy families, messy relationships. But then when you say messy family, everything comes in, doesn't it? Mm. So uh, politics comes in, food comes in, um, music comes in, art comes in. And in this particular book, a bit of my passion being a, um, a person of science, a bit of wildlife biology comes in. So, you know, uh, stuff like that come in. So it's about everything and anything and nothing really, but um, it's a book about people and relationships. Yes. I mean, your books always, I think, uh, politics comes in as much as it touches personal lives, like in Rebirth. That's a big thing when you're asking about, um, you know, what do you, uh, would you want to be a woman writer? What do you feel about labeling? Mm -hmm. that, that's really um, a very difficult question because I get constantly asked woman writer, number one, second writer from Northeast, although I've lived 20 years outside yes. of the Northeast. And thirdly, if you're from Northeast, why aren't you writing about politics? Yes. But the thing is, um, Politics is always there in every city, from Calcutta to uh, Jammu to uh, Bangalore, but um, I write about it as much as it impinges on our day-to-day -day life, because um, really, when we say politics, we can be passionate about it, but does it touch us day-to-day? -day? Every day is all about your alu sabji, your kids going to school, and about uh, seeing the next movie, the next book. So not as mundane as that, there are stuff around it too, but then I do write about politics as much as, uh, let's say, the Assam politics <coughs> affected uh, real people. Um, uh, not really an insurgency um, drama or a thriller. So I do, I, I keep getting asked that and right. I do write about it obliquely on the fringes of um, the human condition. Right. And Josh, everybody is waiting for the third book of the trilogy. So tell us about it. Uh, uh, I was supposed to have given the first draft on the 31st of January, which I think... Is your that editor that here? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Uh, well, I haven't started yet. So... Um, so it's going to be a hard-working uh, February and March. And then hopefully, yes, the third one, a third and final part of the trilogy will come out. Um, it's basically, uh, the, the effort will be to try and kind of, you know, you, you, you start with an adventure, you take it up a notch in the second one, the third one you really want to end with. I, mean, I don't want to end as a damp squib, so that's the thing that I need to crack. Final questions, please. Yes, if we could have the mics there. <coughs> 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 
Hello, ma'am. Uh, I am uh, uh, from Presidency University, your college, actually. So, uh, from the very start, from my childhood, I have been a very voracious reader, very voracious reader. I remember I finished the uh, Harry Potter series in a week, in a week. So, uh, like, uh, I am, uh, you know, uh, there are the college pressures. I am taking an internship, creative writing at that, and uh, getting Spanish classes, everything. So, I rarely get time. And uh, just like uh, two and a half hours or so, I get time, you know, because I come very uh, home late. So, uh, uh, and I have to finish, uh, finish my internship materials uh, while the right on the back. So, uh, the thing that matter, uh, the question that I wanted to pose is, is it the idea or the treatment of the idea that is important? That is, that should click with the public, that should click with yourself, as a matter of fact, that you should be able to convince people that uh, you should read this. So, it's the idea, it's the treatment of the idea, or what factors do you think that is important uh, for, a fa for a book to click? Really. Thank you. See, this is a very uh, difficult matter, you see, about the clicking with the public, you see. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I hope to know. But uh, at the same time, you know, I think, uh, don't, don't think about that. The thing is, you know, in, in art, it's a very elusive um, process. You never know. In, uh, as we say, you know, about um, sculpture, you say that when you have the thing, there's something about breathing life into the form which is done uh, during Durga Puja as you know you know so there's that whole um, ritual where life is breathed into uh, the form so I think um, you have to keep reading more and you have to so unconsciously you're training yourself to open up to knowing you see because that's that's the thing it's it's all in you so there are these voices in you which will tell you what is working because you have an editor later on, but that's all, you know, you're your own first editor, you're your own first reader. So, I, what I do is that, you know, I, I read very widely and as much as I can. So, uh, um, I hope that I can open myself up in order to understand better. So, keep with the process, it'll teach you. You, you're the most experienced. So. One more question. I want to ask, uh, how is social media, blogs, Twitter, Facebook changing the dynamics of writing? How is writing in the contemporary world? I am wasting a lot of time. That's what I can tell you. I don't know about anything else. Um, I'm sure it has its benefits. Word gets around. But uh, if you're not incredibly disciplined, you're sucked into Facebook like, you know, like this whirlpool <laughs> and and then before you know it two hours are gone so um, it has its uses but it's best to have someone else do it for you to be honest if because you otherwise afford, yes, you're, if, if you, you pretend it. that you're working and, and you're doing your own social media marketing you're actually probably wasting a lot of time it's a threat also you know this Facebook I sometimes I find it to be a threat because you know everyone is writing there a nice structure of pros and very innovative thoughts, very creative, you know, so you then you, you know, just find it very threatening, what am I doing here? And how am I going to earn my living by yes, writing? Long, because yeah. this is a place where everyone can, you know, become a self-supported writer. And then there is, you know, 20 likes, 30 likes, 50 likes, and you are, every moment you are more sucked than something. How, how come there is 100 likes, you know, so... <laughs> it can make you neurotic, absolutely. I'm not at all happy with these medias and all. They should all vanish very soon, otherwise, yeah, we are going to, you know, vanish, you know. <laughs> it's very no need for publishers, there is no need for distributors, there is, you know, no need for a press or whatever it is. So, it's completely a very, very, you know, tough world there, which is, you know, growing up more every day, I think. Oh God! I uh, yeah. my raptor walked. Yes, it's the sort of it's the fear we live with that you know um, how are we going to earn a living if it's all <laughs> online and it's all free and and actually a lot of books can now be downloaded. Therefore, are you claiming you earn a living from writing? 
Uh, does it make happy? Make you happy? I don't, I'm not happy at all. I'm not so very relevant yeah. question. Thank you for asking that. That brings out a lot of fears and apprehensions. But on that note, I think uh, we'll bring this session to a close. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, I hope you enjoy. Thank you.